students, welcome to La Excellence. Welcome to the 60th weekly magazine where we'll be covering from 16th to 22nd April. So I'll be teaching you those areas which are important from prelims, mains and also for next year when you're preparing. Is that fine? So weekly from the Hindu and other papers, whichever is important we'll be covering. Along with this, we will also be providing monthly current affairs and PAB as well. Fine? So, with this, let me quickly start about what are the important areas in this particular week. The first important issue was about Basava Jayanti because of Karnataka in news for elections and other reasons. And this 12th century philosopher was very, very important and even Prime Minister has spoken about him on a world stage. Now, when you read Bhakti movement and all, one of the major issue with the students is, when you read the NCRTs and all, usually you will stick to what was present or what is there in those books. But you won't read about some state-based cultures. And whenever they are in news because of current affairs and all, high possibility UPSC may ask you a question out of these books as well. For example, Tamil Nadu was in news for multiple reasons and most of the questions came from the books of Tamil Nadu government. So several students have started reading culture books of that. But that should not be the way you should approach. So what we should do whenever out of the box areas comes in. Now this person becomes a very important individual, especially when it comes to exam this year it may appear in mains as well where they may ask you the role of Basavanna. at that time you should talk about the 12th century philosopher where long back in karnataka he started fighting against the caste system where he said that we don't want anyone in between you can directly pray to shiva and this is seen as continuation of what we observed in tamil nadu still 10th and 11th century and after that in 12th century we see this particular individual who brings people from different communities and he formed what is called as Anubhava Mantapa where his fight was not only against the caste system but he also fought against gender discrimination. So this is very very important for you and they used to sing and they used to write vachanas and with the help of these vachanas they used to preach. To different people so because of all these reasons it's very very important for you to ensure that you read about this and at last when I talk about the vachanas you should be aware that that was a period when Sanskritization of different languages were taking place if you take Kannada before this in the 11th century most of the words were very difficult to understand Mainly because they used to think that the poet or writers have to use complicated language and the knowledge has to be limited only to few. Whereas these people ensured that the language has to be as simple as possible and it should reach to maximum number of people. And their ambition was what we call in the Marxian terminology alienation of like you know people. People are already alienated in the society and you have to bring them out of this is what they tried doing at that time itself. So it's very important for you to ensure that they fought against alienation, they fought against the caste system, gender discrimination and they ensured that whatever work you do, you should have satisfaction, you should be happy and you should see God in that work itself. So these are some of the points that you can mention and I would suggest you to use them in ethics as well where they will ask you which philosopher you like and what is his preaching and whether you, you have adopted any of his preachings, you can use this particular philosopher as well. Is it fine? So next, we have to see, because of the Katua incident, what is important is the Bakarwal communities who are present in Jammu and Kashmir. Yes, sexual harassment, rape is important. I'll come to that in a separate topic. As if now I want you to know about the Bakarwal communities who are nomadic tribes who move from Jammu to Kashmir, right, till Ladakh. 
and they usually see in summers if Chinese are entering into our territory or not and then they come back to Jammu and these people along with Gujars they form 80% of the tribal population of Jammu and Kashmir. I want you to be aware about this particular community because they are in news for multiple reasons and also whenever you get Indo-China issues at the border, Bakarwal communities are the one whom we try to recollect. From all this point of view, simple question of UPSC can be, Bakarwals are associated with which state? So one of the major state where they are associated is Jammu and Kashmir. You are aware about the petrol prices increasing. Now, internationally, India and China have come together to fight against the rise in petrol prices, but not in a direct way where you say that you can't increase the prices. But there is a differential pricing mechanism in West Asia, where we call it as Asian premium or North Atlantic discount. What is the meaning of this? The meaning of this is Asian countries have to pay extra tax or money for purchasing oil. Whereas the North Atlantic countries, that is European Union and the US Canada, they have to pay less. One of the main reasons cited for this is these people are far off and they have to like you know pay additional prices for carrying the oil and natural gas as well so transportation costs of these countries will be more so they have to pay less whereas the asian countries are nearby the transportation cost is less so they have to pay more this is what they usually argue but right from the time it was introduced it is always criticized now india and china are coming together and they are saying that this has to be removed there shouldn't be any differentiation between north america or asian countries until and unless you remove this it would be very very difficult so this is asian countries like India, China coming together against these OPEC countries. I'll explain about the OPEC countries. Why is this issue? There is monopoly of OPEC where the West Asia is the main source of oil and natural gas, especially for the Asian countries, whereas the North Atlantic countries are actually aiming to extract oil and natural gas, which is available in their seashore, right? So we are at their mercies, because of their monopoly, they are targeting us. Second, there is political affiliation where Saudi Arabia, Kuwait and all, they have different agreements with them where they sell the oil and natural gas at a lower cost. Whereas India and China are paying the price. And then you get the geopolitics. As I told you, you have Gulf Cooperation Council, Syrian issue, you had Iraq crisis, you have now Iran crisis. All these issues are taking place in this region. And who have control over this? It is United States and the European Union. So to appease these countries, usually these countries are willing to give oil and natural gas at a cheaper cost. So all this will lead to giving oil at a cheaper cost known as North Atlantic discount, whereas we have to pay more known as Asian premium, right? So if you see this, this is the most important region from where you will be reaching to different parts of the world. You can see Asia is paying Asian premium as they are closer. Whereas when we talk about Europe, right, South America and mostly North America, they are being given discount mainly because of the distance. Remember, even the South American, African countries are not provided. Africa usually purchases it from the domestic market itself. But West Asia is the one where China, India, ASEAN countries are overly dependent. Related to this, UPSC can also ask you about OPEC. So what is OPEC? It is an organization formed in 1960 in Baghdad. And remember at that time, Iran, Saudi Arabia were on the same side. All were supporters of United States of America. Along with this, Iraq, Kuwait and Venezuela, these five countries came together and they understood that if each country is selling oil in its, at its own cost, then what is going to happen? Each one will be 
in loss because everyone will be like you know multiple players are there whoever will sell at a lower cost the countries will go and purchase from them the others will be affected so to ensure that collectively everyone will benefit they formed what is called as opec and now what has happened overall you have 14 countries in opec indonesia earlier was part of this now they have withdrawn from opec Apart from this, the headquarters of OPEC is in Austria, Vienna. Oil and natural gas is not present in Austria and it is not a member of OPEC, but the headquarters is situated in OPEC. This is what I want you to know. And as it is outside these regions, so Iran and Saudi Arabia are still working together. So here you can see that this particular area, Iran, Iraq, Kuwait and Saudi Arabia are the most important countries along with this you have UAE as well correct UAE and Qatar you can see Angola right Africa Nigeria where oil is present Algeria and Libya it is in this region then you have Venezuela and Ecuador Venezuela Ecuador like you know they have come withdrawn again they have come multiple things are there I want you people to know that there are 14 countries right Indonesia was earlier part now it is not part this is the latest news the next important issue that we need to see is actually with respect to chemical weapons use very very important why because you know that Syria is undergoing bombings mainly because of this chemical weapons now let me talk about this chemical weapons United States of America actually wanted some reason to enter into Syria because of the Arab Spring Assad government which is present in Syria is not pro United States and it is pro Russia at this time Obama the president of United States of America actually said that there is information about chemical weapons being present in Syria and Syria is not a signatory to chemical weapon convention and there is a possibility that Syria may use chemical weapons against its people and if this occurs United States of America may take action along with other global powers and they will definitely get permission from United Nations this was Obama's stance at that time within next three to four months we usually observe the use of sarin chemical weapon which led to death of several opposition members in Syria at this time United States of America actually said that this is done by none other than Assad government and we are going to take action against them and he said this along with Israel at this point Chemical Weapons Convention, Russia, India, many other countries came together and they actually proposed that Syria will be part of Chemical Weapon Convention and whatever chemical weapons they have will be removed and there is no need of war. And this led to Nobel Peace Prize being given to Chemical Weapon Convention and the organization associated with this. But the biggest problem with this organization is now again there is chemical weapon news and the United States is actually saying that this is done by Syria whereas Russia and others even Assad government is telling that let there be an international inquiry about who has done this United States says that we have done the inquiry already and we know Syria is behind it whereas Syria believes that US is biased towards Syria and they don't want to agree with this particular aspect so who has to look into it then it has to be OPCW which is part of CWC but organization for prevention of chemical weapon use can only tell you people that yes chemical weapons are used but they can never tell who has used it so that is the biggest challenge that we are actually finding in this particular situation I hope this is clear you have several chemical weapons like mustard gas, blister agents, nerve agents like sarin, VX and all. VX was actually used to kill the North Korean leader. Sarin was used by Syria. So these are present. Not only this, when you talk about chlorine and all, they are also powerful chemical weapons. Remember, 
But the biggest problem with these chemical weapons is that they can be used in normal equipments as well. For example, in labs and all you use chlorine. Now this chlorine can be used in weapons as well. So this is the biggest problem. We need to understand about the chemical weapons use. Fine. Now, who are the members who are actually part of this chemical weapon convention? So, if you look at this, right, Egypt, North Korea, South Sudan and Israel, right, they are not part of chemical weapon convention. Israel has signed but not yet ratified it, right. Now, along with this, after 2013, Syria has become a member. So, this may be expected in your prelims. Then, administered by Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons. I told you, whether it is like you know done properly or not, whether all the chemical weapons are being dismantled or not, is done by whom? OPCW. Very, very important. Right. Where is the headquarters? Hague, Netherlands. When was it formed? 1997. As I told you, it would determine whether chemical weapons are used, but not who used it. Very, very important guys. So, please go through this carefully. India has visited the Nordic countries or when we visited to these countries, we are speaking about India's relationship with them mainly because of the Arctic Council and certain research which India does in this particular region. Now, as soon as you look at the geography of this, one important thing you should be aware about this is most of these countries are part of Arctic Council and India is an observer country. China and many other countries always wanted to be part of this. Second important thing, India is doing lot of research in this particular area, mainly associated with climate change. We say that this is the first pole, right? Ice, first pole, second pole is Antarctic and the third pole is Himalayas. Whenever anyone from the Himalayas or like from India goes to Nordic countries, they usually say that we receive people from third pole. That is people are coming from third pole to first pole. And research on what? Research mostly on climate change. That is melting of glaciers and what is the impact of these melting. And if they are trying to preserve, what should be the preservation techniques? Third important thing, there is a place by name Svalbard here. So, this is very, very important to wear. Like, you know, genes of all the plants have been con collected and they have been placed here. So, that in future, if there is any problem, you will have some seeds which can be used for production of different varieties of crops. So, the wild varieties have been placed. With this, we are also keeping some wild varieties which are present in India in Jammu Kashmir region as well. Then, I want you to know that when we talk about the Human Development Index, these are the people who are very well, like working in this. And they are in top 50 or like, you know, I can say they are in top 20 itself. So, they are very good in this and India has to work hard to come out of that. And measures from these countries will be very much beneficial. Then when we talk about Indian diaspora, significant Indian diaspora is present in this region and we are working to ensure that the diaspora is taken care of and Indian diaspora is treated well in this particular area and we are trying to build like, you know, relationship on the basis of the diaspora as well. And then when we talk about this particular region, it has become important because of the Polar Silk Road, which is being planned by China. So, China will definitely try to have some port facilities in this region. And if India can also get access to in future, it will be very much beneficial for us. I hope it's clear, right? After seeing all this, we need to talk about the renewable energy as well. So, when you talk about the tidal energy or like, you know, wind energy and all, these countries are very good in this so, it's very important for us to have science and technology related relationship with these countries as well. Here, I want you to know that every region has something in common. 
and if you know that a particular country is present in that particular region you will be in a position to answer this so what we are doing is we are planning to give the basics for international relations i know this is completely current affairs based and whatever is going to happen next year is what the questions you usually expect but what is happening you need some material or some book to understand till now whatever has happened so for that what we are planning is we'll come up with a series where i will give you videos on international relations where i will make each country like you know country specific studio video where i will be dealing with south asia separately then i will go region wise like you know west asia has a different problem and india's interest in west asia is different so we behave differently in west asia the same thing when we talk about southeast asia our interest is different and the way we behave we behave there is different diaspora of india in west asia is different diaspora of india in southeast asia is different at the same time diaspora of india in the nordic countries is different the next to most important issue that we need to see is death penalty for rapists is it important yes now you may get an essay on this death penalty for rapists so here i want you to think about one side we are talking about euthanasia where we are talking about the passive euthanasia and active euthanasia correct so when we are discussing about the passive and active we are focusing on the passive not on the active this is one area where they may ask in ethics second you may talk about the death penalty for rapists where you have to collect information mainly about where is death penalty given and in those countries wherever death penalty is awarded is there any possibility that it has led to reduction in the number of crimes second important thing is this enough should we have to take several other measures like changing mindset of the people so this was already asked in ethics paper right so whenever you talk about an essay you should have at least 1250 words where you need to talk or you should have facts to say how many rapes are occurring within the rapes like you know what is the number which is being reported what is not reported what is like you know the age of the people who are involved and what should be done right so all this is important so this will be more of philosophical right where you have to argue about what is right and what is wrong so here you should try to create fear in the minds of the people and will this fear definitely help when no one is watching most of the crimes especially sexual harassment and all takes place when no one is watching are they happen in a secluded places in india is there any possibility for us to have cameras and all throughout the country then the government will tell or the public will start criticizing government in the name of moral policing so you have to bring different aspects and have to discuss so what we have to ensure is essays has to be dealt differently and whenever you are seeing these my simple suggestion is whichever articles come in the newspaper please collect points on this and for this alone if we have to spend time so what we will be trying to do is we will have some issues weekly and that issues will be discussed and the material for that will be provided now whatever discussion i have made is available in the magazine for you right so those who do not have the magazines can actually download it in this particular website okay so it's available where you can take for 3 months or 6 months anything is up to you next you have atal amrit abhiyan it is an health insurance scheme of assam government it is not provided for everything but it is provided only for six diseases up to 2 lakh for every individual from the bpl and low income households if they ask you for everyone it is wrong only for bpl and low income households and then what are the diseases cardiovascular diseases cancer kidney diseases neurological conditions neonatal diseases burns you have to follow this whenever they say it is successful then this can be implemented at the 
national level as well. So government is planning to have health insurance scheme throughout the country and for that these will act as a precursors where on the basis of analysis of this we will be in a position to say yes insurance is working rather than the government hospitals. So you can go directly to the private you can get checkup and the government will pay them you can come without paying a penny. So that is what these abhyans are all about. The next important issue as it is controversial mostly the question will be related to constitution where you have to read about the removal of CJI very high possibility you may get a question. So article 124.4 of the constitution lays down the procedure for removal of a judge of the supreme court including the CJI when there is misbehavior or proved incapacity. Now what is the procedure? 50 members of the Rajya Sabha or 100 members of the Lok Sabha. They have to go to their vice chairman or the speaker and there they have to submit it and if the speaker or the chairman accepts it, then what is going to happen? Then he has to make a committee of three including like you know high court judge, jurist and all and they will sit and decide yes this case is good for removal and then if it is passed with a two-third majority in the parliament, both houses, and when president accepts it, then the removal of CJA will take place. In this case, you are aware that the chairman of Rajya Sabha rejected it. Fine. The next issue that we need to discuss is about the e-Vidhan project. Here, this is a project aimed at paperless transaction in the state legislatures. It has already been started. Now they want to ensure that the use of paper has to be limited. So the ministry which is looking after this is Ministry of Parliamentary Affairs. Very very important if they ask you about e-Vidhan. It is at the state level and the central government is actually helping the states. Next important thing is about an award associated with Swachh Bharat Abhiyan which was started on in 2015 where the main focus is about giving awards to those who have ensured that the public places have been maintained with high levels of cleanliness, hygiene, infection control, right? So if all these are there, then award will be provided. And what is that award? The award name is Kaya Kalp. The next important scheme associated with environment and ecology is the FAME scheme where it is like you know, you will have eco-friendly vehicles that is electric vehicles have to be manufactured in India and for that like you know if you are manufacturing some incentive has to be provided by the government and that is faster adoption and manufacturing of hybrid and electric vehicles in India scheme. It was launched in 2015. It is available for two wheelers, three wheeler auto, passenger four wheeler vehicle and light commercial vehicles and buses, right? With solar energy and all, right? It will be very helpful for us to use this particular one to ensure that the fuel usage will be reduced. You might have heard about urban or peri-urban. The meaning of this is when you have an urban area and a rural area, in between this urban and rural area, you will have, right, the characteristics of both urban and rural area known as urban and these are known as peri-urban areas right also called as urban space which are outskirts or the hinterland which is solely dependent on the urban areas right and the government has said that the urban areas will have the properties or facilities of the urban areas but they will have the environment which is similar to the rural areas. So opportunities of the urban areas to the rural people is one of the most important thing with respect to this. With increasing urbanization the demand for land is increasing at the same time there is lot of impact on the people who are present in this particular region and there is lot of diversion of agricultural land into other things. So when you look at each one of this, what is important for us? It is very, very important for us to ensure that whenever we are talking about the peri-urban areas, right? These are the areas where urban and rural uses mix and often clash. 
very very important these are the transition and this should be the main focus so guys here for both gs geography and geography optional i want you to remember about what we call as migration usually migration occurs in different stages where in the initial stage the people will not be willing to migrate at all in the second stage what they do they migrate from rural to rural then rural to urban right then you will see some people moving from urban to urban that is like you know bangalore to hyderabad and in the last stage we usually observe urban to peri urban that is to the satellite towns and all and then we see death of the cities or multiple things so what is important here is like you know peri urban if it is growing then these problems are new and it has to be dealt differently right so it's very important for you to know the term when they ask you peri urban areas don't get confused they are talking about the hinterland urban areas or the areas in between rural and urban the last important issue that we need to see is actually with respect to coastal regulation zone there was a committee set up under shailesh nayak where the main aim was to ensure that how exactly we have to take care of our coastal states or union territories especially the coastal zones and how we have to protect it now what is a coastal zone if you take coastal regulation zone like you know 500 meter from the high tide line and a range of 100 meter along banks of creeks estuaries backwaters and rivers subject to tidal fluctuations so what is this this is a region inside the land right that is if you have a coastal region from the high tide towards the land we usually consider 500 meters now you take this particular case where we divide the coastal regulation zone into four very important for both gs and geo optional where you have to see when we talk about the four zones first zone is the crz1 that is coastal regulation zone 1 so what is that here ecologically sensitive areas closer to the coast now what you should do it is very very important for you to ensure that only exploration of oil and natural gas and salt is permitted nothing more than that where exactly is this present between high tide level and low tide level so where is your crz1 like you know very very important economic zone or we can say that like you know environmental zone which is in between high tide level and low tide level so second when we look at crz2 here what happens the unauthorized structures are not allowed to be constructed in this zone so these are the areas closer to the shoreline okay then you have coastal regulation zone 3 so when we talk about the coastal regulation zone 3 rural and urban localities which fall outside the coastal zone 1 and 2 okay the areas first you have between high tide and low tide whatever area is there you call it as crz1 correct then you have some area closer to the shore known as 2 three means where are we talking the cities and rural areas which are present away from these two are the one we call it as crz3 only certain activities related to agriculture and even some public facilities are allowed in this zone where monitoring defense and others can be permitted and the last important zone is like you know territorial limits that is 12 nautical miles from the baseline okay so here what happens fishing and allied activities are allowed in this zone solid waste like you know usually is let off in this zone but that needs to be controlled eco tourism and others are some of the things which we need to ensure that like you know the coastal zones have been protected i hope it's clear why can you use this when they are talking about the maritime pollution first important thing to prevent the pollution indian government has divided into four crz1 between high tide and low tide crz2 closer to the shore three rural and urban areas four territorial waters right so this is very very important 
Again, guys, before finishing, I just want you to know, in the magazine, we have given questions. So if you want to answer, you can answer these questions and send it to us. We will evaluate you. And even for this, you have to visit the website that I said before. At the end of the lecture, you'll get the four numbers and all. You can actually call that for inquiry as well. And for those people who are looking for geography optional, international relations and internal security classes of mine, right? I'll be teaching them completely. You can contact to the numbers given or the number that I provided. Thank you guys. Thanks for watching.